So if we had a position function given to us, say s of t, we've learned in the past that the derivative of that position function is the velocity function. And we've learned that the second derivative of that position function, in other words, the first derivative of the velocity function, is the acceleration function. Well, integrals are the reverse operation of derivatives. So we can reverse all of this and say that the integral of an acceleration function will give us a velocity function plus some constant. And we can say that the integral of a velocity function will give us a position function plus some constant. So these are the facts that we need to keep in mind when doing this problem over here. We are given an acceleration function, and if we want to find the associated velocity function, what we do is we can integrate that acceleration function. Now so that I have a little bit more room, I'm going to shrink this down. Because while you might be able to do this integral pretty quickly, technically what's happening with this integral is we're using u substitution, where u equals negative t. Our du then becomes negative dt. Our integrand turns into a negative to e to the u du. We can pull that negative 2 out of the integral. The integral of e to the u du is just e to the u. So our final integral here when we substitute back is negative 2 e to the negative t plus some constant. And that is our velocity function. Of course we'd like to know what the value of this constant is. To find the value of that constant we're going to use our initial condition. We're going to plug t equals 0 into this function. e to the 0 power, really anything to the 0 power is just 1. And we know that v of 0 equals negative 2, so I'll plug that in right here. Solving then for c gives us c equals 0. And our final velocity function can be written as v of t equals negative 2 e to the negative t plus 0. That is great, but we also want to find the position function associated with this velocity. And to find a position function, what we're going to do is we're going to integrate that velocity function. This integral is going to be exactly the same as the integral from the previous part of this problem. We're just going to get a 2e to the negative t, and the extra negative that comes out of doing this integral will cancel with this negative. Tack a plus c, I'll call it c1 onto the end of that, so as not to confuse it with the previous c, and we have ourselves a position function. Of course, we would like to know the value of this c1. To find that, we're going to use our initial condition. s of 0 can be found by plugging t equals 0 into this function. Now, we are given that s of 0 equals 5, so I'm going to put that there. And the right-hand side of this equation turns into a 2 plus c1. And if I can just squeeze this in down here, we can solve that c1 equals 3. Finally, plugging c1 into our position function gives us our final s of t, which is going to be 2e to the negative t plus 3. And that is going to do it for that problem. Hopefully that helps you out with understanding the relationship between position, velocity, and acceleration of an object. And I'll see you next time for the calculus problem of the day.